Good morning, my name's Jim Walker. <coughs> I'm the pastor of Revival from Down Under in the eastern suburbs of Melbourne in Australia. Uh, this morning, I'm going to speak on a topic which I have called life. Which I have called life. In 2 Timothy, if we turn to 2 Timothy, and chapter 2. We're told by the Apostle Paul to study to show yourself approved unto God, a workman that not a workman that needs not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. <clears throat> rightly dividing the word of truth. Because of what the Apostle Paul tells us in 2 Timothy 3, verse 16, I believe this study must be done from all Scripture. He says, all Scripture is given by inspiration of God and it is profitable for doctrine, that is teaching, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness. So as we study the word from all scripture, we are, uh, we are being taught, that is doctrine, <clears throat> and we are being instructed in righteousness. Righteousness is God's ways, not our ways, in the ways of God. If we go over into 1 John, 1 John and chapter, 1 John chapter 1. The Apostle John said in verse 1 and verse 2, that which was from the beginning, which we have heard, which we have seen with our eyes, which we have looked upon, and our hands have handled of the word of life. Jesus is the word of life. For the life was manifested, and we have seen it and bear witness, and show, show unto you that eternal life, which was with the Father and was manifested unto us. Hallelujah. Amen. He is the word of life. He is the word of life. In the beginning was the word. The word was with God. Turn over to John. For John chapter 1. This is what the apostle was speaking of. In the beginning was the word. The word was with God. The word was God. The same was in the beginning. All things were made by him, and without him was not anything made that was made. And in him was life. In him was life. And so, <clears throat> the purpose of Jesus coming was to give life, for us to be in him so that we would have life. Because if we are in him, we are part of him, so that means we have his life, and his life is to, to live in us. To dwell. And it lives in us by his word. Lives in us by his word. <clears throat> in John chapter 14, John 14, and in verse 6, verse 4, and with where I go, you know, and the way, you know. Then he said in verse 6, I am the way, the truth, and the life. Jesus is the way. And when you study this, Jesus is the way. He, he said, No man comes to the Father but by me. So no man comes to the Father but by me. So Jesus is the way to the Father. 
The other teaching I had was, I am the door. And so a door is a means of entrance. Hallelujah. Also a means of exit. Jesus says, I am the door. He that enters in. He that enters in. So we have to enter into the door. Amen. Glory to God. That, that's in, in John chapter 10. In John chapter 10, verse 9, I am the door. By me, if any man enters in, he shall, he shall. If we enter in, it says he shall, he will, he shall be saved. That word saved there comes from the Greek word sozo. And that word, and that word means to be whole, to be it, it, to be complete in every way. You're going to be, if any man enters in, he shall be made whole, he shall be made complete. Amen? In him. Glory to God. Hallelujah. In verse 10 it says, the thief comes, the thief comes not but to steal, to kill, and to destroy. But I have come that you might have life and life more abundantly. So Jesus didn't only just come to give us life, but he came to give us an abundance of life. Abundant life. Amen. Now, if anybody in this room today is carrying a sickness, or a disease of any kind, as hearing problems, seeing problems, whatever it might be, that is not life. That is actually part of the curses of the law. And we need to understand the word and believe it. Because Jesus come that we might have an abundance of life. Now, do you believe the word? We need to put the word in action. Hallelujah. This word way in John 14, this word way means in the Greek, a pathway or road. In the Hebrew, it comes from a Greek word called derek, also meaning pathway or road. So in both testaments, the word way means a pathway or a road. Amen? And so we need to study this and learn this. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. In Isaiah 55, Isaiah 55, speaking of the way, just remember, this word, the word way is a pathway or road. It says, verse 60, verse 6, Seek ye the Lord while he may be found. Call you upon him while he is near. That tells me the Lord is not always going to be found by people. It's going to be too late. In the other teaching, the door, we, we find that at the present time the door is open, but there is a time coming and almost is now that the door will close. And once the door is closed, people will not be able to find him. It will be too late. Seek ye the Lord while he may be found. Call, up him while, call upon him while he is near. Let the wicked forsake his way. So there's the way of God and there's the way of man. For, and let the unrighteous man his thoughts 
and let him return unto the Lord, he will have mercy upon him, to our God, for he will abundantly pardon. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways the road in which you are walking upon, the path in which you are walking. They are not my road, they are not my ways. Turn from your ways. <clears throat> for as the heaven are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, <clears throat> and my thoughts than your thoughts, says the Lord. This has come out a couple of times in the last couple of meetings. Glory to God. In Proverbs 4, if we go to Proverbs chapter 4, Proverbs 4, The purpose of all scripture is to teach us the ways of righteousness. In verse 4 it says, He taught me also and said unto me, Let your heart retain my words and keep my commandments and live. So, keeping God's commandments gives life. Keeping the word of the Lord gives you life. Amen? In verse 26 it says, ponder the path or the way of your feet and let all, the, all your ways be established. So we are to ponder, think about where we're putting our feet. There are two paths. One we're told in, in Matthew 7, one is wide and leads to destruction, one is narrow and leads to life. And so we are to ponder the path of our feet, where we put our feet. And God has given us his word to help us to do this. In Psalm 16, Psalm 16, And verse 11, it says, Thou wilt show me the path of life. Thou wilt show me the path of life. Hallelujah. Amen. So God's going to show us, reveal to us, the path of life. And he does that through his word, because we're told in Psalm 119, verse 105, Thy word is a lamp unto my feet. And where you put your feet is on the path of life. We have to ponder what path we're going to... We, we have to ponder where we're going to place our feet on what path we're going to walk down. Are we going to choose life or are we going to choose a path of death and destruction? Hallelujah. In, uh, in Proverbs 8, sorry, Proverbs 20, in Proverbs 12, Proverbs 12, and in verse 20, 28, it says, in the way or the path, in the way or the path of the righteous is life. And in the pathway thereof there is no death. Hallelujah. In the pathway thereof there is no death. Death and that which pertains to death, that is the, the things that the enemy wants to bring against us, to destroy us, 
to cause our destruction, they are not of you. They are not. They should not pertain to any Christian. They're not yours. You've been set free from them. But we keep them. We, it's, it's like, it's mine. I'm holding on to it. Well, it came to set you free. Hallelujah. And we need to let them go. Don't, you know, if he's trying to take it off you, don't keep all of it. Don't keep pulling it back. Let it go. He wants to take it. Hallelujah. Amen. In Proverbs 8, and in verse 35 it says, For whoso finds me, finds life. Whoso finds me finds life and, and shall obtain favor of the Lord. But he that sins against me wrongs his own soul. All they that hate me love death. So everybody in this room today, I believe has found him and so if they found him, they have found life. Now we have a choice, don't we? The choice is whether we believe it or not. That's the choice. Choose you this day. Hallelujah. We need to choose whether we have life or death, whether we walk on the path of life, we have to ponder it. We have to think about it. But don't think too long because you might walk down the wrong one. Just think about putting your feet on the path of life, not on the path of death. Amen? Glory to God. In 2 Corinthians... 2 Corinthians chapter 4. The Apostle Paul says, All was bearing about in the body the dying of the Lord Jesus. Chapter 4, verse 10. All was bearing about in the body the dying of the Lord Jesus, that the life, that the life, that the life also of Jesus might be made manifest in our body. Hallelujah. The life of Jesus is to be made manifest in your body. And that is not. He was never sick. He was never sick. He was never diseased or anything else. He came to set us free from that. Acts chapter, Acts chapter, Acts. Acts 10, isn't it? Acts 10 verse 38, isn't it? How God anointed Jesus with Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power who went about doing good and healing all that were oppressed with the devil, for God was with him. Sickness is an oppression of the devil. And everything else that goes with it is an oppression of the devil. And Jesus came to set us free from it. Hallelujah. Amen. Last week, Debbie prophesied a prophecy. Then Ruth prophesied. And I, I think at the time I heard the prophecy, and then it's, it's almost like it's taken off you. 
and you have to be reminded what was said. And so last night, Debbie said, I think you should listen to Ruth's prophecy because I think it was for you. And so I listened to Ruth's prophecy. And through Ruth's prophecy, this teaching has come this morning. Through what you prophesied is the result of this teaching this morning. Hallelujah. Because I'm going to read in a minute what she said, one of the scriptures she actually brought out. And when I read it, you need to get all of it. Because when I read it, I got all of it. I can't make you get all of it. Only the Lord can quicken his word to you. Sometimes we can prophesy a word and not hear it ourselves. Right? You can prophesy a word and not hear it yourself. I've, I've seen that happen before. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Psalm 103. I read 2 Corinthians 4, 10, didn't I? Yeah. Psalm 103, verse 1 through 5, he says, Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me, bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all of his benefits. Who forgives all thine iniquity. Who heals all thy diseases. Who redeems your life from destruction. Now we just read in John 10.10 10, that the devil come to steal, kill, and destroy. That means, that word destroy is the Greek word apolumi, and it means destruction. He wants to destroy every one of us. He, want, he wants to cause destruction in our lives. Now, Jesus came that we might have life, not to be destroyed that might have life actually sets a bit of a condition because might have life is whether we're obedient to his word. If we are doing what the word of the Lord says, we'll have life. If we are pondering the, pondering the path of our feet, we have life because it's a, life of, it's a path of life. Hallelujah. If we're thinking on the word, we have life because the, the word imparts life. It is the word of life. And the Holy Spirit is the spirit of life. Hallelujah. And both of them were sent, both of them were sent to rescue. Hallelujah. Both of them are sent to rescue. Jesus came to make the way and, and the Holy Spirit finishes the job. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Who, satis who, satisfy, who crowns me with loving kindness and tender mercy, who satisfies my mouth with good things so that my youth is renewed like the eagle. Now, when I was young, I had no problems, physical problems. I was, I was strong, I was fit, you know, healthy in every way. And so, he said he's going to renew my life as the eagle. As my, you renew it. As, uh, and that's what it needs to be done. My life, my physical body needs to line up with the word of God. Hallelujah. In every way. 
in every way. Wholeness. Glory to God. In John 11, I think every time I read this verse, I said the same thing. Verse 25, Jesus said, I am. I am is not I will be or I was. It is I am, that is now. That means today. That means today is the day of salvation. Today is the day of wholeness. Today is the day of soteria. That's what salvation comes from. When? Today. I am, right now, I am the resurrection and the life. And he that believes in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The enemy comes to steal, kill, and destroy. But Jesus came that you would have life, and life more abundantly. He is your resurrection. Hallelujah. He is your life. The enemy didn't want you to know this. I am is now. When we study, we find in John 1, Jesus is God, the Word in flesh. John chapter 1, in the beginning was the Word, the Word was with, and the Word became flesh. So Jesus is God, the Word in flesh. This is God, the Word, written. This is, it. this is him. This is the word of God written for everybody. You can't say you've not seen him if you've read this. If you have eyes to see, that is. If you have eyes to see, then you will see him in his word. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. In Matthew chapter 4, if we turn to Matthew 4, talking about the word. I know that many Many are preaching, normally in denominational churches, not in spirit-filled churches, but in denominational churches, they, they preach the Old Testament is irrelevant. It's all about the New Testament. But we've already read that we had to study to be approved of God, and that studying should be from all scripture. Hallelujah. And here in Matthew 4, and verse 4, Jesus said, It is written, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. Hallelujah. Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word. That's in Deuteronomy 8, verse 3, I believe. So here, Jesus is quoting from Old Testament Scripture. Hallelujah. He's quoting from Old Testament Scripture in the New Testament. So how relevant is the Word of God? So, if we want to live, 
How do we live? By the word. How do we live by the word? By believing it. By believing it and applying it to your life. That's how we live by the word. By believing it and applying it to your life. When you hear the word, not with ease, when you hear the word in here, faith arises for you to believe to receive what you're believing for. That's what happens. Faith arises. Because faith comes by hearing the word. So if you're hearing the word this morning, receive what you're believing for. Receive what you want to hear. If you want to hear, receive it. Hallelujah. When Debbie told me about Ruth's prophecy and I listened to it, I got hold of it. I got hold of it. Hallelujah. And I, have, I, I, I now have an expectation. Hallelujah. That I shall live and not die. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Because he is the Lord that healeth me. Not he was. He is. I am the Lord that healeth thee. Hallelujah. When is that? Now. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Proverbs 4. Verse 20, my son. Now, if you're, if you're reading this, you're his son, because there's neither male nor female. So he say, my son, attend to my words. Attend to my words. Attend to my words. Hallelujah. What is attending to God's word? Eh? Attending to God's word. When you attend to something, you're working, are you? And so, if we're attending to the word, that we're studying. Study to be approved of God. Attend to my words. Attend to my words. Incline your ear unto my sayings. So we are studying and we are spiritually listening to what the word is saying. We're listening. We're having ears to hear. <clears throat> let them, that's the words, let them not depart from your eyes. So we need not only to hear them, we need to see them. Keep them in the midst of your heart because that's where the word of the Lord goes. Goes into your heart. For they, the words of the Lord, are life unto those that find them. And health that word health is medicine. Medicine to all your flesh. That's your physical being. That is medicine to your physical being. Hallelujah. Keep your heart with all diligence, for out of it are the issues of life. Now, we know in Matthew 12, he says, out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. 
And that's why he tells us to keep our heart with all diligence. Because the way we can do it is, you know, death and life are in the power of the tongue. And so we can speak life or we can speak death. And Jesus said, you can have what you say. Because normally if you're saying something out of your, it comes out of your mouth, it's coming from your heart, you're believing it. I think I'm getting a headache. It's come out of your heart. So, because you're thinking it, you can have it. Never come into, never come into agreement with with symptoms. Never come, because the enemy will always put symptoms on you. And you never come into agreement with symptoms. And I have, I have a migraine. Shouldn't ever you say, I have, you've come into agreement with the symptoms. Instead of saying, you have no part of me, get out of here. Jesus took that. He died for all my sickness, all my pain. Hallelujah. And headache is a pain. And migraine is a pain. And he bore all my sicknesses and all my pains. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. <clears throat> hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. In Proverbs 10, And verses 16 and 17, the labor of the righteous tends to life. So how, what, what are we to labor in? He that labors in the word. How do you labor in the word? You study to be approved of God. If you're not studying, he can't approve you. Studying is a requirement of all Christians. Not just pastors. The labor of the righteous tend to life. The fruit of the wicked to sin. He is in the way of life that keeps instruction. All scripture is for your instruction in righteousness. And so if we keep instruction by studying the word, hallelujah, it is a way of life unto you. It will tend to your life, not to your death. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Amen? I've already Mentioned Psalm 119, verse 105. Turn there. Psalm 119, verse 105. Thy word is a lamp unto my feet. Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. Verse 130 says... The entrance of, the, of your words gives light. It gives understanding. Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light to my path. Verse 133, order my steps in thy word. And let not iniquity have dominion over me. Iniquity is sin. Sin is unrighteousness. If we're walking in unrighteousness, we're on the wrong, wrong path. God's ways are paths of righteousness, not paths of unrighteousness. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. 
Proverbs 5. Verse, I'll go from verse 1. My son, attend unto my wisdom and bow your ear to my understanding that you may regard discretion and that thy lips may keep knowledge. For the lips of a strange woman drop as a honeycomb and her mouth is smoother than oil. That is strange, a false woman. But her end is bitter, as wormwood, sharp as a two-edged sword. Her feet go down to death. Her steps take hold on hell. Lest thou should ponder the path of life, lest thou should ponder the path of life, her ways are movable that thou canst not know them. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We are to ponder again the path of life. Hear me now, therefore, O ye children, and depart not from the words of my mouth. Hell. Remove your way far from her, and come, come not nigh the door of her house. Hallelujah. Her house is the false church. And we're not to go down that way. Hallelujah. Because that way will lead to destruction. It's a path we do not want to be found on. Hallelujah. If we turn into Philippians chapter 2. Philippians chapter 2. And in verse 16, the Apostle Paul says, we are to hold forth the word of life. That I may rejoice in the day of Christ that I have not run in vain neither laboured in vain. Holy forth. In the Old Testament, they had to write it between their eyes. They had to have it before, so that the, their eyes were on it all the time. They had it there. Have you ever seen a Jew? They have a little thing here, a little thing that holds the word between their... It's a little book with the, the really religious Jews have this thing now. Hallelujah. And we are to do the same. If we hold the word forth, then we'll be performing it. We'll be looking at the word and at nothing. What does the word say? What does the word say? Hallelujah. <clears throat> Hallelujah. Go to John chapter 6. In a few minutes we'll be Come into communion. And communion is the bread of life. Partaking of communion is life. The bread is the bread of life and the, the, the communion juice is the blood of Christ, symbolically the blood of Christ. And in the blood there is life. So it's a double portion of life. So we are to partake of life. Because Jesus said, unless you eat and drink of my blood, you have no life. Hallelujah. In verse 48, Jesus said, I am. I am. That's not I was or I will be. Again, that is, I am. Now, I am now, 
the bread of life. We need to get hold of a revelation of the table of God. The table of God is life now, an impartation of life now. Hallelujah. Verse 51, I am the living bread which came down from heaven. If any man eat of this bread, he shall live forever. And, I, and the bread that I give is my flesh. Speaking of communion. Verse 53, Verily, verily, I say unto you, except you eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, you have no life in you because you're partaking of him. And in him is life. He is the word of life. And when you partake of him, he comes in you. You're partaking of his life in you. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Verse 56. He that eats my flesh and drinks my blood, what? Dwells in me. And I in him. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Verse 57, as the living Father has sent, sent me and I live by the Father, so he that eats me, even he shall live by me. He that eats me shall live by me. He that hungers and thirsts after righteousness shall be filled. Filled with what? Filled with him. And he is life. Hallelujah. <clears throat> Glory to God. Glory to God. Verse 63. It is the spirit that quickens. Who? It is the spirit that quickens. The spirit? Yes, because he is the spirit of life. That word quickens is he's the spirit that gives life to. It gives life to you as you believe the word. As you believe the word of life, his job is to give you what you're believing for according to the word of life. Hallelujah. <coughs> Hallelujah. <coughs> Do we have to shout to wake you up this morning? Glory to God. Hallelujah. I said earlier, all scripture is profitable to them that believe. It is the spirit that quickens, the flesh profits you nothing. The words that I speak, they are spirit and they are life. They are life-giving words, not words of death. They only become words of death if we do not believe them. As we are believing them, they are life-giving words to you. Hallelujah. And I want to receive life. I want to receive from this what he says. Because he cannot lie. Galatians chapter 3. We read earlier, we read earlier in Psalm 103, he has what? I have redeemed your life from destruction. I, I have redeemed your life from destruction. So the enemy has no longer any right on your life. Because you are a redeemed vessel. 
Hallelujah. Galatians 3. We need to believe this. Verse 13, Christ does what? He has redeemed you. He has redeemed you from the curse of the law. Hallelujah. Blessings and cursings I have set before you, says the Lord this day. Blessings and cursings. Hallelujah. The blessings come through obedience. The cursings come through disobedience. Deuteronomy 28. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Deuteronomy 30. Deuteronomy 30. Verse 15, see, I have set before you this day life and good, death and evil. In that I command you this day to love the Lord your God. What are the two greatest commandments? Love the Lord thy God with all thy heart and your neighbor as yourself. Jesus said in all in these two things all the law exists. The law is covered by these two commandments. A new commandment I give unto you that you shall love one another as I have loved you. By this shall all men know that you are my disciples. Hallelujah. Loving somebody is not going that's not loving somebody. That's not showing the love of God. <laughs> Hallelujah. Railing on somebody. <coughs> Amen. <coughs> Glory to God. In that I command you this day to love the Lord your God, to walk in his ways, and to keep his commandments and his statutes and his judgments, that you may live. Verse 19, I call heaven and earth to record this day against you, that I have set before you life and death, blessings and cursing. Therefore, choose life that both you and your seed after you may live. That you may love the Lord your God and that you may obey his voice. I, this morning I'm speaking what are you hearing? You're hearing the words, I speak in voice. I am voicing my words. This is the voice of God. And we need to keep and obey the voice of God, his word. If we keep his word, we shall live. We are to live by every word. Amen. Amen. Yes. Hallelujah. Romans 8. <clears throat> Verse 1 and 2. There is therefore now when now, there is what, therefore? Now, not later, not earlier, now, no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. The flesh is death. The spirit is life. For the law... This is what Ruthie prophesied. For the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus sets you free from the law of sin and death. 
two laws. One of life, one of death. Choose life that you may live. Are you in Christ Jesus? 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 Well, you've been set free from the curses of the law and everything that goes with it. You have been set free from sickness, disease, possession, everything that goes with that that pertains to the law Jesus has set you free from it. And you're now under a new law. And that law is a law of life. Hallelujah. Do you believe this? I believe it. Put your... If you've got any problems in your body, just put your hand on it. Just put your hand on any problem right now, Mark. Just put your hand where you may have a problem. Because the spirit of life in Christ Jesus sets you free from the law and its curses. Right now, be set Free, according to his word. <laughs> Hallelujah. I haven't got enough hands. <laughs> so I'll just put them all over the place. <laughs> Hallelujah and believe. <laughs> Set free! It has made you free. And Jesus said, He whom the Lord sets free is free. Be free today. Be free today. Hallelujah. Verse 11. But if the spirit of him that raised up Jesus from the dead dwell in you, does he dwell in you? Does he dwell in you? He shall give life to your mortal body. <laughs> Hallelujah. Not maybe. He will. Receive life this morning. Hallelujah. I am the resurrection of the life. He that believes in me. Hallelujah. Second Corinthians. Chapter 3. Verse 6. Who also has made us able ministers of the New Testament, not of the letter, but of the Spirit. For the letter kills, but the Spirit gives life. The Spirit gives you life. <coughs> Hallelujah. I think it's Proverbs 18, I think. Whew. Whew. Are you believing this?
death and life are in the power of the tongue. And they that eat it, that love it, shall eat the fruit thereof. Verse 21. Proverbs 18, verse 21. Death and life are in the power of the tongue. We have to watch what we are saying. Out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. Our, our words cannot, our words must line up with this. If we are to have life, our words must line up with the words of life. We should not be speaking over us or over ourselves or over anybody else. Sickness, disease or anything else. You don't look well today. Don't say it. Because straight away you'll get them thinking. And as a man thinks, so he so he is. So don't do it. I've learned from experience. You can have what you say. Comes out of here, you can have what you say. Hallelujah. Proverbs 13. <clears throat> Verse 1. A wise son hears his father's instruction. But a scorner hears not rebuke. A man shall eat good by the fruit of his mouth. And the soul of the transgressors shall eat violence. He that keeps his mouth keeps his life. But he that opens his wide his lips shall have destruction. Oops. Oops. Enemy comes to steal, kill, and destroy. By opening your mouth, you give he you give him place to destroy you. You're opening your mouth to destruction. He that keeps his mouth keeps his life. Romans 15, verse 4. A wholesome tongue is a tree of life. A wholesome tongue is a tree of life. Out of the mouth, a wholesome tongue is a tree of life, but perverseness therein is a is a breach in your spirit. Hallelujah. Out of the abundance of the heart, your mouth speaks. We have to make sure that the word of God is abundant in your heart. We do this by teaching the word. You do it by reading and studying the word. As you read and study, the word of God goes into your heart and it becomes more abundant than what is already in there. Scripture says the heart of man is evil and deceitful and wicked above all things. And that's what the heart of man is like. And so before we're saved, that's all we could speak was out of what was the fullness, what is in our hearts. But when we get saved, we start to hear some word. And when we hear the word, not with these, but with the spiritual ears, and with our spiritual eyes we get understanding, once we get that, it replaces that which is evil. It starts to push it out. And (coughs) the more word, the less evil and wicked. The more word, the less evil and wicked. Until eventually... That which is abundant is the word, and that's what you'll speak out of. (coughs) Hallelujah. 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 
Hallelujah. Glory to God. He wants life. And we're going to come to communion. And we're going to partake of life. And everybody said, Amen. God bless you.